Hi everyone, I'm volcanologist Dr. Janine Kripa, and this is my guest. Hi, I'm Brian Turbush. I'm the Earthquake and Volcano Program Coordinator for Washington Emergency Management Division. Thank you so much for joining me. I swear he's not just sitting there in the dark. Our lighting was fine and now we're having technical difficulties. Technical difficulties. <laughs> so this is working no, from sorry. home during COVID. Um, so you have a really interesting job as an emergency manager in Washington State of the United States. You have several active volcanoes or potentially active volcanoes, but one of them in particular, Rainier. Can you tell us about what the danger is from Rainier and what's being done to help people prepare for this? Absolutely, I'd be happy to. So Mount Rainier, a lot of people have seen it. Blown into Seattle, into SeaTac Airport, you've definitely seen this mountain. It's huge. But just because it's the biggest volcano, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the most explosive. This is a huge misconception a lot of people have. So its largest explosions have been much, much smaller than Mount St. Helens 1980, which was not even Mount St. Helens' largest eruption. Explosions are not a huge hazard with Mount Rainier. It'll definitely spread some ash downwind when an eruption happens. But the big hazard we have to watch out for with Mount Rainier is lahars. So these are the volcanic mud flows. Mount Rainier has the same glacial cover, as much ice on it, as all the other mountains in the Cascade Range combined, and then a little more. So if an eruption starts, a lot of that can melt. It can just mix in with mud, ash, water, and start moving downstream, picking up debris along the way. Now this is a hazard you absolutely need to be out of the way of. You can't be in the way of a lahar and survive. So what can you actually do about this hazard? That's the important part. If you know that you're in a Lahar hazard zone, the USGS Cascades Volcano Observatory and our Washington Geological Survey know where those zones are. You can look at a map and find them. If you're in there, you just need to know that when a Lahar is coming, get to high ground as quickly as possible. We have evacuation route signs all over the roads. These will really help. But another important thing is you want to walk out of the way as quickly as possible. You got to save those roads for people who need them. That's emergency services, people that might have a little bit more challenge walking. Keep those roads open because if there's a lot of traffic, nobody's getting out anyway. We've done models on this. So it might sound crazy to try to get out of the way of a Lahar on time, but a couple school districts that are modeled only have an hour, the cities of Puyallup and Ording, they have evacuated all their students. They've all been able to walk to a safe high ground within an hour. So it's shown that it can be done. Just practice makes perfect, like everything else. So if Absolutely. You want to, yeah. <laughs> if you want to know what your evacuation routes are for your hazards, I highly recommend speaking with your local emergency manager. Your city or county might have one. Um, they're going to be the people to talk to who can help you learn what that route is ahead of time so you can quickly get out of there. Thank you so much. And I will get you to give me a few links. Um, I'll post the um, hazard maps and your local emergency managers on the YouTube page for this as well. So thank you so much for joining me for this volcano moment. No problem. Thank you, Dr. Krippner.